allow me to just put this in reverse here. Q&A time. I am still struggling with the office being slightly homeless, but uh, yeah, Q&M, 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 Q&M. This is gonna be a great video. I can't even speak and I'm doing a Q&A. <laughs> I threw up a poll on Instagram for some questions and I will go ahead and knock them out now. Some of them I'm actually glad people asked because I do get a chance to talk about some of the things going on. This is a great way to have coffee. So. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Plans for the Barn Find RX-7, as well as long-term plans for all the cars you have. Um, we'll focus on the first half of that question. The plans for the Barn Find RX-7 are to either succeed on YouTube such that I can afford to keep it indefinitely, or sell it and fund YouTube. <laughs> I almost sold it earlier in the summer because for a second it was just like $62,000 FD, $78,000 FD, hundred and the car is too nice to do anything with because it has survived for all these years. I don't, I don't have it in me to just chop up a perfectly immaculate car. Like I had trouble modifying this Subaru, which had 109,000 miles on it when I got it like and started driving and since then I've put wheels on it and coilovers and coilovers were not a style of choice they were cheaper than OEM suspension replacement and I destroyed the OEM suspension over the past like five years and it was dragging wheel well on both rear tires at Tail of the Dragon for like two of the trips that I went there. The one thing I might do if I get a chance to, which it doesn't really seem like many people are interested in giving this car a chance to, is a top speed run. There's two events I applied to last year. They weren't interested in that car, which is understandable. They have like Veyron Super Sports and Chirons and I don't know supercar names, but very, very interesting cars doing their top speed runs that would go very interesting speed. And a RX-7 to people that are really into supercars probably just looks like a Miata. But if I get an invite, I will gladly cross 50,000 miles in that car at its top speed. What made you want a Lexus? Um, the Lexus LS400 is one of the greatest vehicles ever made. The Lexus LS400, you can go watch the RCR videos or the up to speed videos or what have you. It was the car that an entire multi hundred million dollar effort to launch the brand Lexus hinged on. Toyota being Toyota made it incredible. The engine's unkillable and super tunable. Chassis, like it's very stable at high speeds. It's perfectly agile enough to do things that cars 2000 pounds lighter can do. It's fought on Tail of the Dragon. It can carry six sets of tires in the back seat. It's amazing. That car is the one that I want to build long term and just for my own purposes. I want to see that thing turn into what I know it can be because the end, the platform does not need many changes other than a manual conversion and some like finishing touches. But to build a VVTi 1UZ and put a big old single turbo on it. They uh There's rolling any lag in this thing, huh? When Lexus made the first generation of the LS400, all the other car companies had their engineers purchase them and reverse engineer them as like they typically do. And GM just straight up said like, we can't do this. We don't know how they did it. We understand everything that they did and we just can't do it. <laughs> 
Thoughts on a third gen Camaro as a drift car? I misspelled Camaro. <laughs> oh no. Oh! Yeah, no, that would be sick. Updates on the fleets. Try to be as quick as possible. All right, in order of purchase. 2006 WRX, still needs a head gasket, still a daily, that's it. Car number two, 99 LS400. Uh, I crashed it, it wasn't a serious crash. It was seriously stupid, but it wasn't a serious severity crash. Right after the end of the last video I made in it, and it needs, well it doesn't need, it has all these parts, but we just need to put them on. New axle and control arm, it'll be good. Car number three, barn find FD. Maintenance. Car number four, 2006 STI. Crashed back in March or April in Mexico. Still needs like fourteen or $1,500 worth of parts to fix it. But again, matter of priority on both time and funds. Car number five, uh, the Red FD. The Veilside Project. It is at JPR. Defined Auto Works is getting the conversion kit to drop the 20B in. And I think the next week or two, which means that car Finally, two months behind schedule, will enter its break-in period and I will be able to show you running and driving the three-rotor. Why is it stressful? Drift week is less than two months away. And we haven't even started the car. Cool. All right, car number six. Car number six, the LS swapped FD, the blue one. That car is still in the pipeline as a giveaway vehicle, but you'll notice a theme here. Priorities and money, time, and brain power to get that giveaway set up means it's probably gonna be a 2023 thing because to hire a properly outfitted agency to make sure that you don't go to jail for an illegal lottery costs thousands of dollars. And figuring out what merch I can sell to you guys that doesn't feel like I'm peddling crap upon my followers, <laughs> um, that also takes a lot of brain power. But I have ideas. It's We just have to survive the Veilside project first. Now, car number seven is where it starts to get interesting. LS Swapped FC. I don't know if you've heard anything about this on the channel, but it exists, and depending on how the next 48 hours goes with two different friends of mine, the plans and the destiny of that car will be vastly different. So I'll just wait to tell you until we find out what happens. And we're done, just kidding. Car number eight, 1994 RX-7 FD. You'll find out eventually. Why is... Biking. Dream car garage. I will stick to three because otherwise we'll be here for an hour. Koenigsegg Gamera, Veilside FD, with a, if I had it my way, it would be with a four rotor. Um, street legal, but WRC outfitted STI hatch. If I had to pick three, if I had to pick five, if I had to pick seven, I could pick 20. I, like Jay Leno technically has some of the most tasteful vehicles in the world, but it doesn't count as good taste if you just own everything in a domain. Where do you plan to take your career? At what point do you say, this is all I ever wanted? Jesus Christ, that's a question. I will stop wanting to do new things when the world ceases to have any advancement, which I don't think is a time that's coming. What is one thing people constantly underestimate you about? How absolutely fucking stupid I can be. <laughs> but on a real note, I have the luxury and the sort of paradoxical burden of everyone seems to have more faith in me than I do in myself, which sounds nice. It sounds nice. I, it's, it, just saying that out loud sounds lovely. It's some, something's weird about it that makes it like terrifying all the time ever. It's like a very weird vestigial prodigal child complex that I have and I've slowly been working on it to not have it drive me crazy and ruin my life. I don't know, You, I mean, everyone has experienced imposter syndrome, now imagine your entire life being that. My girlfriend said something funny, which was eating, and I was like, what are you talking about? Everyone knows I can eat a lot, and she said yes, but everyone still underestimates how much more you can eat than they think. <laughs> how did you get into modeling? Um, I made a video freaking out about a cake that I didn't want to eat but didn't want to throw away and two million views later I got signed by my mother agent and now 
I'm a model, I guess. What's your goals for future content and life stuff? For content, I want to carry out this YouTube channel, um, get it to a point where I can do more of the concept work and less of the nitty gritty work. My ideal setup would to be make a system and have the revenue coming in that would allow for regular videos year round, so documenting projects, documenting people around me, and then allow enough bandwidth for me to edit one major project that I really care about artistically a year, whether that's another road trip special, whether that's you know a short film or an event coverage or a docu piece on someone else. And then long, long term, I want to have sort of a network of channels that isn't based around me, but I really want to get into science communication because I think if I would have had someone that I watched for entertainment point me into thinking scientifically about anything at an early age, I would have saved myself a lot of like just bad advice that I could have thought for three seconds about and realized I shouldn't have listened to. Um, and if more people realize that they can do deductive reasoning and it doesn't require you to be a genius to like think scientifically, I don't know, I feel like that's important. So, entire life story, go. No. <laughs> Favorite car media, Fast and Furious, Initial D, Old Magazines, etc. Um, Fast and Furious is what I have to give credit to outside of Dukes of Hazard. I grew up in the South with Southern White Parents. What do you want from me? It's a great show. Initial D is a recent thing that I finally watched because Adam forced me to, and I'm happy he did. It's a very funny show in many senses, ironically, but also it is entertaining. It's a it's a good car person show. Now, I was never around family or friends or anyone growing up that was into cars. The first exposure I had to other car people was like when I was 17 or 18. Um, so magazines were never really something that I would have known to subscribe to. And I think they're on their way out around the time that I was really getting interested in cars. But Fast and Furious, definitely. I had that on my iPod Nano third gen on that like the screen that was yay big and just watched standard definition Tokyo Drift for years on end. <laughs> How's Dumbleweed? Dash. How does that five speed hold up like that? I wanna be honest with you. I have no idea. Also, define hold up. Because allow me to just one moment. Put this first here and keep going backwards. So, does that count as not having blown up? My suspicion is that when I'm sliding in this car, just because of its power limitations and differential limitations, um, it's in first gear. Which is not super stressful. There's a lot of mechanical advantage that the transmission offers for that. Um, whereas if I was clutch kicking in fifth gear all the time or banging gears doing street races, it might have could put a long time ago. But when I daily drive cars, I am extremely gentle on them. And then when it's time to like, I, I get them to do, you know. I'm running out of SD card space, but here's a clip that is from a recent video that will be coming out as soon as I have power turned on in the new office. Thank you, bye.